Ow. Number 10, friendly fire. Oh boy, this is just, I don't know. It's just silly. It's less WTF admittedly and we're just like, why though? So if you end up getting the phaser blaster, you can stun animatronics that are chasing you by shooting them in the eyes. This temporarily blinds them. That all makes sense to me. The other item you can get, the phas camera, works in a similar way with its flash. Also, that makes sense. And yet, you can also use this to stun your friend Glamrock Freddy. Why would you ever want to do that? Why is that even possible? Why is that even an option? Just how sadistic is Gregory? These are all the questions I'm left to ask myself and unfortunately you who chose to watch this video, this shouldn't even be an option in the game and yet hey it is, you can do it. Just because Gregory is probably kind of partly a jerk all the time. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, make sure you show us that you love us and that you want more FNAF content by hitting that like. Number nine, traveling around in Glamrock Freddy. Why is this weird to me? I mean, it's cool. But why is it weird? Well, because it really doesn't seem like there is enough room inside Freddy for you as Gregory to fit. And I still stand by this observation today. I've honestly been saying it since the release of this game, when we got to see the chest cavity and also get a sense for, you know, our own size as Gregory in the game. It just doesn't add up to me. And the claustrophobic side of myself kind of feels like as cool as it is to move around more safely in Freddy and also in essence pilot him, that is cool. I personally would never want to climb inside of his chest, no matter how small or how big it was. That just seems like no thank you. And definitely not if it is things like Faz watches also in there that I gotta share space with. That part where it appears that you get out still confuses me. The Faz watch only appear like after, like moving up inside Freddy from another part of him, like a limb or something, or was it there the whole time? If it was there the whole time, there's really no room. It really doesn't make sense. Number eight, what's in the vent? One of the most actually terrifying moments comes from the music man who chases us in the vent. But also, I have some questions about this. Where did this music man come from? Why is he in the vent? Why is there a small and giant music man in this game? Is this little music man part of DJ Music Man's army? Like, does he have a bunch of them? That sounds horrifying. And still, why is he in the vent? The sequence where you are chased by the little music man through the vent feels somehow even more terrifying than being chased by a regular size animatronic, even though that should feel more threatening. And yet it also feels like a weird choice in terms of the narrative. But I guess in terms of creating a horrifying moment, the developers did succeed here. Which is probably why Music Man is in the vent to begin with. But I, I don't know, maybe that's also his dressing room? After all, you know, the main stage animatronics are all get dressing rooms, so... I mean, do the other animatronics get dressing rooms? Do the wet floor signs, do they do they have a room they get to go to? They should at least get like a green room or something where they can just like chill and hang out or a break room, you know? And it's Seven Henry. And while we did mention killing Charlotte, why didn't you off her dad after you realized that he knew everything? Like, why did you think that killing Charlotte would not have any consequences? Like, you killed your business partner's daughter. That's gonna be pretty obvious to him, especially when he already suspected you were up to something. Hence the green bracelet that he gave her since he was trying to take extra care to protect her and then she still died. I mean, he could have done more, but that's still a vengeful father if I've ever heard of one, okay? And he hasn't even needed vengeance at that point when he gave her the bracelet. So then, you know that he's gonna come after you, or at least seems like he will, so why didn't you kill him next? Killing Henry could have done wonders for your criminal career. I mean, yeah, the cops are already suspicious, but as long as they can't find a body, you're gonna be clear again. Like, yeah, or even if you're paying them off, you'll be fine. They won't put you away for five missing kids. They won't put you away for a missing father as well, especially a jury who has to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that you are the killer. And then without a body, there's no real forensic evidence. And again, they didn't put you away for missing kids, so like, come on, just finally off Henry, and then you'd be able to stay as yourself or even Springtrap alive and then not get burned three separate times. Plus, your son would be alive, so... Yeah, 
Well, Michael would be, not a crying child. And at six, Princess Quest. The whole reason Princess Quest is a thing in Security Breach was to lock Vanessa away and prevent her from regaining control of her own body, or at least all of it. So why did William create or allow for the creation of a sort of failsafe that allows her to escape? I mean, sure, they didn't expect some random kid to come along and figure it out, maybe, but given the track record of this series and Afton's life, you'd think that maybe he would have smartened up at least after four. 40 f***ing years. But, cause like, this is like having a self-destruct button on a bomb. Or if the Flash has like a, like a steal all my speed button that someone can just press, it's, it's just stupid. Like if you want something to work, why give it a way to fail? You know? Like this is like probably one of the dumb things that Afton has done. You know what, I think there are, there are some dumber things, but depending on the way you look at it, it could have even been higher on this list. But seriously, like what's the point to put a way to undo your evil plans? Like, like, it's one of the most ridiculous things in this story. And I get that we can save her and have a good ending, but that ending isn't even canon. So, like, we could have done without it. It's, it's just, it's stupid at this point. William has the brain capacity of a freaking toddler. Ow. Halfway through in a number five, Crying Child. I've had a ton of people complain to me about how Crying Child's death wasn't William's fault since he didn't put Crying Child in Fred Bear's mouth and Michael did that and then the spring locks failing was because he was crying. Mostly people were complaining about that on TikTok. Um, however, to me, there is no logical way that an animatronic jaw would have crushed his skull. And you know what? Even not just to me. It should be to all of you as well. The spring locks, like, they weren't in use. They didn't have to keep the, the things to the side because it was in an animatronic mode. And even if it was, an animatronic jaw would require so much power to actually, like, accomplish the closing of that. So like the only way that Crying Child's skull could have been crushed was if Afton had intentionally superpowered the jaw of Fredbear, which would make sense if he wanted to use it as a kill machine or maybe even a backup kill suit or maybe he was originally planning on using Fredbear but then after his son got crushed in it, he was like, yeah, no, let's move on to Spring Bonnie, okay? This is just the worst way of going about it. There, There is no way that this was a spring long failure. The Fredbear suit was already in animatronic mode meaning that the spring lock mechanisms, which are the things used to keep the robotic parts to the side, which are the things that would have failed, weren't being used. The spring lock failure problem comes from when those mechanisms are put under stress of keeping the robotic bits away from the person inside the suit, uh, and then they fail, and then that's when all the metal parts go back to where they were. So if it's in robot mode, the spring locks can't fail because they're already in use, okay? Keep in mind, again, the term for spring lock in this context is referring to the parts that move the robotic bits away instead of the actual suit, which is also sometimes referred to as a spring lock, but I'm talking about the actual bits that would have failed because they weren't in use. Number three, demise of Roxy. I think one of the most messed up moments in this game is when you need to fight Roxy after you've in essence blinded her and like drastically messed her up. This really was the moment that made me question everything I thought I knew about this animatronic and her personality. Sure, Roxy seems self-centered and egotistical to begin with, but when you see just how devastated she is at the prospect of perhaps no longer being beautiful and being loved and accepted. Oh man, that like hits you. It really shows you just how sad of a character this really is. It made me feel for Roxy and it also made me feel horrible for everything being done to her. Like I was thinking, dang, I, I don't want to see this animatronic hurt, but also that's how the game goes. So that's just like a thing that you have to have happen. You have to defeat her. You have to in essence kill her with fire or you know, maybe not straight up kill her with fire, but at least stop her with fire. Number two, it was Afton all along? The reveal that none of us were really hoping for, but I guess some part of us all was expecting to happen. I think the fact that William Afton was the villain behind Security Breach was not surprising. But at the same time, it was definitely something many of us were kind of hoping would not happen. Or I think even if you were like, oh, I want William Afton to come back, when it did happen, you were like, oh wait, maybe I never wanted that. <laughs> because like, why? I mean, William Afton is a horrifying villain, don't get me wrong, but he's also a very dead villain. A dead villain that we thought had been dead for a long time and multiple times over. And yet here we are with a villain that seems to keep coming back, no matter how dead he is. He's been springlocked, returned as a restless, rotting corpse. He's been incinerated. He's been a ghost who haunted technology getting uploaded into a game with his consciousness after he died and now he seems to somehow be a charred husk looking for a new form. Cool. 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 Great. Love it. Number one, sleepy time candy. Ugh, moon drop. Ugh. 
I don't really mind the energizing candy in this, the sun drop candy. Although I do feel like that maybe is sus too because caffeine and high levels of caffeine and giving that to kids. But the sleepy time candy, that you can give to kids? I really don't know about that. Moondrop is what we often name the nighttime persona of the daycare attendant. This attendant also has its own matching candy, which is named after it and known for helping kids sleep. Or does anyone sleep? Would this candy work on me? Is it not just for kids? There's something really, really creepy to me about a candy that involuntarily can make you pass out. There's something really creepy to me about a candy that makes you sleep at all because, well, it just it could be used for nefarious purposes pretty easily. Honestly, this was probably one of the biggest things in the game that freaked me out. Though the moon drop persona of the daycare attendant in general is just really creepy. That and like when moon drop is around, you get like the nighttimey vibes. Oh, I don't like that either. That's uh, that bothers me. It's in Cassidy. Assuming for the scenario that Cassidy is the one you should not have killed, this was one of the dumbest things that William could have done. Or maybe he doesn't consider it a mistake, since the one you should not have killed after all is keeping him alive. They're doing it as a way to make him suffer though, so since it's potentially a mistake but could be considered a good thing depending on the angle, I'm going with the top spot for this one. Well, the first spot for this one. But even if he does consider that a good thing, or an absolute win, or if Cassidy doesn't end up being the one you should not have killed, killing those five kids that made up the missing children's incident that most likely ended with Cassidy was a mistake, since it causes basically everything else in his life to go downhill. And he does end up suffering extremely only because of that kill and the others. So if you don't want to count Cassidy as the mistake, count the missing children's incident as the mistake. And at nine, Charlotte. While yes, Charlotte may have been Afton's first true kill, causing his descent into madness, this is more so because of what she turns into. In the game, Charlotte ends up possessing the puppet, who then gives life to the other animatronics, which causes you to disassemble them and release their spirits, and then scare you into your spring bonnie suit that crushes you, and then starts your descent into further madness. But even discounting the game aspects of killing her, being a mistake, in both universes where William kills Charlotte, Henry comes after him for it, which results in what should be his death multiple times over. And not to mention mention how in the book specifically, unbeknownst to her, Charlie is an animatronic robot that was meant to replace Henry's daughter, and it's also revealed that the animatronic is also the baby animatronic that we know and love, who can switch between her forms at will. So yeah, in the book, Charlotte is also baby, who is also Elizabeth Afton. And it ain't the fun times. There's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. These are clearly state-of-the-art. There are just certain design choices that were made for these robots that we don't fully understand. We were hoping you could shed some light on those. She can dance. She can sing. She's equipped with a built-in helium tank for inflating balloons right at her fingertips. She can take song requests. She can even dispense ice cream. With all due respect, those aren't the design choices we were curious about, Mr. Afton. This classic line of Afton being interrogated that plays the first time you open sister location is definitely showcasing this idiotic mistake. The cops know what these animatronics are capable of and were designed to do, so they instantly end up being even more suspicious of William and are going to be keeping a closer eye on him. Probably why he ends up dressing up in the spring bonnie suit to start killing, which ultimately screws him over. So yeah, designing the fun times as killbots was definitely a bad idea. Number 7, Mega DJ Music Man. I can't believe this really happened in the game. Also, if we're talking about animatronics getting their own dressing rooms, like DJ Music Man would need like such a such a big dressing room. He's such a big animatronic. A giant music man. That that was real life in this game. I was so convinced when we got our first look at the trailer that Music Man, the giant music man that we saw, was going to be some kind of like delusional moment. Like, we'd simply imagine that Music Man was bigger than he was, we'd hallucinate it. And honestly, when I found out about the Sleepy Time candy, that honestly seemed even more plausible. I was like, oh boy, Sleepy Time candy, whoo! But no, Giant DJ Music Man is a real thing. And apparently, he is usually a super nice guy, according to Glam Rock Freddy. Super nice guy. However, in the game, he doesn't seem so nice when he's chasing you and your heart is thumping and you're literally running for your life. Yeah, DJ Music Man from Security Breach is still something that will haunt my nightmares today. It honestly kind of makes me wish he was some kind of hallucination or dream sequence in the game. I don't know, that would be more easy to accept other than like, that's real life. That's horrifying. Number six, ending the game early. I think one of the weirdest things that's built into this game is the ending the game early option. Like the fact that we get 
that option. That's weird to me. That's just, it's an, it's an interesting thing to build in and I, I don't fully understand really why they did. Like I get having multiple different endings, cause that's cool, but giving you even the option to leave at 6 a.m. and just like end the game when there is so much more to do in this game and the game would be so short if you just stopped playing entirely there. I don't know, why is that an option? Did they add it in because they wanted people to have an out if they were too scared? And the real question, did anyone actually like full stop playing there? Let me know if you did because I bet some people did do that and those people would have drastically missed out or did drastically miss out. That's why I don't even think the option should be available for us in game. It just seems weird. Number five, lack of Vanny. Vanny was a character that we all got excited for. She was at least alluded to in Help Wanted, and uh, you know, that was a theory when it came to her involvement in this game. And we knew about Vanessa, and then through special delivery, it was kind of hinted that Vanessa and Vanny may be one and the same, and that Vanessa was being manipulated or influenced by Afton into doing his bidding, revealing a darker side to her. This was also the theory for what would continue to happen in the game security breach. And because of that, people thought that Vanessa and Vanny might be, you know, the main antagonist, or Vanny would be anyways, between those two personas. And even better, maybe this would actually be a villain we could actually save. Maybe we'd actually get a villain that gets redeemed, oh my goodness. And then Security Breach came out, and Vanny didn't do very much. Even the Vanny specific ending that we get is honestly kind of disappointing. We don't even get a Vanny boss battle option really, at least not a playable one. Number four, upgrading Glamrock Freddy. One of the most messed up things that you do in the game is definitely defeating Glamrock Freddy's friends and stealing their parts to upgrade him. Especially since you generally try to avoid talking to him about like, where exactly you got the parts and how exactly that happened. And when you do mention it, you're kind of just like, oh yeah, that happened, don't worry about it. And when it does end up coming out sort of what did happen and where you got the parts, yeah, it's an awkward conversation to have. Glamrock Freddy also seems really hurt that you hurt his friends. Oh, and he's like, they're not in their right minds. They're just innocent victims. And then there is the whole weirdness of how detached Gregory seems to be in regards to his own emotions surrounding the destruction of these seemingly somewhat sentient animatronics. I mean, I feel like he's a little shocked, but he doesn't seem to be distraught at all. And I mean, I don't know if these animatronics, all of them are specifically sentient, but based on our experiences with Glamrock Freddy, uh, I think it's relatively safe for us to assume they are on some level, right? And finally, in a number one, location, location, location. The biggest mistake William has ever made, and I will stand by this till the day I die, was the fact that he killed people in his establishment. Okay, it's unknown if this was always his intention, but come on, who the absolute hell thinks that this is a good idea? Who in the comments wants to justify killing your prime demographic in your place of business? Dealers don't kill their best customers, right? Because it's bad for business. So why would William think it's a good idea? Literally, go anywhere else. This is like basically killing someone in your house. Okay, it's putting unwanted and unneeded scrutiny on everything you do. You even end up getting banned from going back in there while the investigation is underway. And it's not like it helped your business, you had to close the first location, resulting in you having to open another location called Circus Babies that ended up killing your daughter. So I think that this mistake is the one that caused every other mistake in the series. All you had to do was kill someone at the park. <laughs> If you killed someone at the park instead, your kids would be alive. You'd be harder to suspect, and then you'd also be rich from your business. And that's why William is a dumbass. In a 10, Arachibodyrophobia. Now, there isn't really any evidence to this since this fear is so incredibly odd, but since it's so odd and I won't really have another place to talk about this, Arachibodyrophobia is the fear of having peanut butter stuck to the roof of your mouth. Not the fear of peanut butter, like you don't even have to be allergic, just the idea of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth is chilling for whatever reason. And it's totally possible that William Afton might have had this phobia, but we can never really be certain, okay? It's just, it's interesting to, to consider. It, it makes him a little more human, albeit a, a slightly odder one, but I mean, this is a phobia for a reason. Maybe because the roof of your mouth is where like your nose connects to your mouth, or something similar. 
I don't know. <laughs> or maybe it could just be because William is a, is a psychopath. Either rationale works for me. In at nine, a Phoebe phobia. A Phoebe phobia actually is a fear that in my opinion makes sense because honestly teens can be stupid and incredibly annoying. Yeah, that's right, a Phoebeophobia is the fear of teens which could help explain William's MO where he chooses to kill kids instead of anyone older. Uh, maybe because he's scared of the older kids and thinks that they could uh, actually overpower him or in reality maybe they'd end up killing him because like I said teens can be quite the severe pain in the ass. Or, teens can be horrible. Especially if they're hanging out at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Like, have you ever seen teens hanging around at Chuck E. Cheese? And if you have, have you ever seen them doing it because they like the establishment? No, they're doing it because they have some nefarious purpose in mind, whether it be vandalism, or to antagonize someone who's working there, or maybe just yelling at some children. Who knows? But they're typically never there because they just want to have fun. In at 9, Gammophobia. Gammophobia is something that I'm getting closer to every single day. What is it you ask? Well, dear viewer, the fear of marriage. Gammophobia is more than just being cautious or somewhat hesitant about making a big commitment. People who have this condition experience intense fear when faced with the reality or even sometimes just the thought of being in a committed relationship or marriage. For some people, negative or traumatic experiences in the past can contribute to an intense fear of commitment. Past relationships can also contribute to the onset of gammophobia, toxic relationships, previous divorce and infidelity can contribute to a fear of getting too deep into a new relationship, which can actually help explain one of the most curious parts of the series, Ballora. We don't know if William was ever married. We don't even know if these kids are biologically his, meaning that he could have adopted or straight up kidnapped Michael, Elizabeth, and Crankchild. So, a fear of marriage or commitment could explain why he created Ballora, so the kids would have a mother without William needing to commit, whether it be due to childhood trauma or a previous relationship. But considering that he's a serial killer, I'm gonna go with a childhood trauma. And at six, hiding spot. How the absolute living hell did he not end up, like, how did he get away with this? How did he not get caught? The smell of robbing bodies would ruin the hell out of the actual atmosphere of the pizza place, because you know, you're supposed to be trying to eat pizza. And the heat from the animatronics, like, the, the robotic parts of their body, would help to speed up the decomposition of the ki missing kids. And the animatronics are in front of all those other kids every single day. There's even reports about people complaining that the animatronics started leaking blood, mucus, and other bodily fluids, as well as, quote, smelling like death. If this was real life and William getting away with this wasn't important for the plot or the story of the overall games, he would have been caught for that instantly. <laughs> Like, oh, we never found the bodies of these kids that went missing at this pizza place. But now the animatronics at this pizza place are leaking blood and smell like death. They also sound like their like bones are being crushed when they move. So maybe we should uh maybe we should check these out. Let's get a let's get a warrant. Uh oh, look, turns out we found those missing kids. William Afton, you're under arrest for the murder of Gabriel, Susie, Jeremy, Cassidy, and Fritz. Boom. Oh, then they could probably throw on Charlie and a couple others on there, I'm sure. Like, boom. <laughs> Instantly. He gets caught. I don't get how this wasn't an open and shut case. Like, William is so goddamn stupid that he shouldn't have made it to the events of the first game. Like, not even 1987. Or not even 1985, alright? It shouldn't have happened. His whole plan is a dumpster fire of bad ideas. Halfway through in at number 5, Elizabeth. Speaking of mistakes... <laughs> Let's talk about his daughter. <laughs> what about getting your own kid killed? That's what I mean. Like, I don't know how William thought that this was a good idea. Like, I feel like this guy just thought, like, how do I capture kids more efficiently? Oh, I know, I can make a robot to lure them in and then grab them when they're close. But like, hmm, what would its design be? Hmm, hey honey, come here, daddy wants some design tips. And then Elizabeth ends up making the most predictable move ever and going directly against her father's instructions to see the robot that's basically perfect in her eyes. Like, William, why did you think that this was ever going to end well? Like, what did you think was going to happen? When has a kid ever listened to a parent? Especially at that age, when they're seemingly also loaded because you own a successful entertainment business. Spoiled rich kids listening to their dad when they say not to touch a giant robot made to appeal to them specifically. Yeah, genius idea, man. 
God, you're a real special kind of stupid, William, aren't you? Like, program a blacklist of kids not to steal. Right? You have facial recognition tech. So come on. Just make a blacklist. Like, don't kill my kids. Easy. God. Getting close to the end, and in number three, xanthophobia. I mentioned how chromophobia was the fear of colors. Well, xanthophobia is a subcategory of that, particularly for the fear of yellow. And considering how William got springlocked thanks to a yellow suit, he could associate that color with that crime. Meaning that he would fear Chica, explaining the change in security breach, as well as Golden Freddy, which explains why there is no Golden Freddy in security breach as well. I mean, there are obviously other explanations, but I think this could be one of them. I mean, like, come on, it, it always seems to be like it's a stretch to be afraid of a color. But this begs the question, is anyone who watches these videos afraid of a specific color? Because if you are, please let me know below. I'm curious uh, about how you live your everyday life, especially if it's a primary color. Um, but I feel like you're pretty safe if it's green. Because I don't think green shows up in these videos pretty much. Because I can't wear green, otherwise I disappear. You don't see this because it's gone. So... But ultimately, in a number two, Plutophobia. I genuinely believe that Afton had to have Plutophobia. Not because he didn't want Pluto to be a planet, but because instead, Plutophobia is the fear of money. And this man made all kinds of horrible business decisions. Killing people in his own restaurant, hiding bodies in the animatronics. I've gone over this in multiple times in multiple videos, but the only way I can explain it is if this guy was just straight up scared of money. It's like the only thing that in my mind mind really makes sense. Like, sure, you wanted to use it as a killing den for your homicidal tendencies. Sure, okay, but how about do that? And also have a profitable business so your children don't feel the need to walk up to robots that you specifically told them not to touch. Or even enough, maybe just enough, to have a babysitter making sure that they don't do stupid things. Like, walking up to the animatronics you told them not to, or running off to that place again, or stuff their siblings in animatronic mouths. Did that ever occur to you? Cuz, of course it didn't. Cuz you must be scared of money. It's the only thing that makes sense. I've solved FNAF. And finally, in a number one, Robophobia. This is literally the phobia this game was made for. Like, sure, it wasn't actually the reason it was made, but seriously, this is this is the perfect fear for these games. While sure, the thought of mannequins can creep anyone out, robophobia is literally the fear of robots, and is surely the bread and butter of not only this series, but William as well. William must hate animatronics with a passion now. Since the victims possessed them, he got springlocked by one, he can only survive by being in one now thanks to his consciousness being sentient code. I mean, it, it's, it's ridiculous. If he isn't scared of robots, it would be a miracle. And I think he kind of deserves to be scared of robots, you know, since he's combined with one. It would make him constantly in horrific terror, which is something that I think we would all love to see. And understandably so. I mean, this is the reason I can't sleep half the time. This guy caused me to think about everything way too goddamn much. In its seven, Papaphobia. Papaphobia is one of my all-time favorite fears because it's the name for the fear of the Pope. Yes, the Pope, like Vatican Big Hat Pope. It wouldn't really explain anything in the series or make much sense, like there's basically no evidence for it, but William killing people is like one of the biggest sins, right? So such an unholy act and unholy man being scared of the most holy man in existence is kind of logical in my eyes, right? Is it just me? Like, this seems like the most realistic weird fear that he could have. And by weird, I mean something so odd that I want to talk about it. Like the, like the fear of peanut butter being stuck to the roof of your mouth. I love phobias. I don't know why, they're just so interesting. Like the Truman Show, how they fake killed off his father so that Truman would be scared of water and then never leave his island. And at six, autophobia. The fear of being alone is known as autophobia, which is also a way to help remember that autobiography is one written by the subject of the book. However, William having a fear of being alone could explain a lot of the series. I mean, this man ends up creating a surrogate wife animatronic, has three kids despite not seemingly wanting them around until he can't have them around anymore, and then loses those kids and goes berserk. Well, I mean like he, he wanted to and was planning on killing before they died, but then he really goes hard into it after they died. 
but it could also explain why he tasks Michael with going to find his sister's possessed robot while he's supposed to be trapped in a room alone, because interacting with his only son, in any form I guess, could help with this fear. It could also be that his multiple personalities all keep each other company, since I'm sure every single one of them is a killer if he has multiple, just because it's William, so of course they all would be. Halfway through into number five, ablutophobia. This one I feel is kind of guaranteed, but ablutophobia is the fear of bathing. And I mean, if a leaky ceiling was enough to cause those spring locks to fail, Imagine what getting in a bath would do for dear old Willie. I mean, there's not really a point in being scared of it now since you are one with the machine. They've already spring locked, you're already dead, basically. But this man is decaying or has been skinned alive by these robotic parts, so a bath would be very appreciated by anyone who has to be in your vicinity, cause you know, it probably smells atrocious. Like worse than anything that the Bones crew would have had to deal with on that show. Even the Palant stuff, cause that was... Yikes. But, I mean, could you blame William for being scared of bathing after getting trapped in an animatronic suit that collapsed because it got a little bit wet? In it for panphobia. While phobias usually refer to specific fears, like ablutophobia being the fear of bathing, sometimes fears are more general, like chromophobia being the fear of colors. But panophobia is the fear of everything. Basically. In a way, it's the fear of a vague and persistent unknown evil. And this, while a bit intense, could explain why William had a psychotic break. The fear that something evil was lurking around every corner, yeah, that's a pretty rough one. And would definitely cause some damage. Maybe even enough damage that he thought that he would have to protect himself. I mean, children can literally be the worst humans on earth, so I understand his target market on that front. Like, I wouldn't be able to do those things, I'm just saying that like I, I think that maybe William thinks that he's trying to do God's work by eliminating those that he sees as evil. Evil. E evil. Yeah, I meant evil. And this phobia would help explain that quite a lot. Getting close to the end into number three, animatronics. Like how the absolute living hell did he end up getting away with this? The smell of rotting bodies would also ruin the pizza place. The heat from the animatronics insides when they're actually like moving around would also speed up decomposition. And the animatronics are in front of people every single day. They even started complaining that the animatronics were leaking blood of mucus and it was smelling like death. If this was real life and William getting away wasn't important for the plot, he should have been caught on that and that alone instantly. Oh, we never found the bodies of these kids, but now these animatronics are leaking blood and smell like death. Huh, that's not related. Oh, they even make like bone crushing sounds when they move. And nah, we, we, we don't need to check these out, or maybe we should. Uh, you know what, fine, we'll take them in. Oh, look, we found the bodies of the missing kids. William Afton, you're under arrest. Like, boom. I don't see how this wasn't an open and shut case right away. Like, will this was so goddamn stupid, they shouldn't have made it to the first game. His whole plan was a dumpster fire of bad ideas. And even if you think, even if you think it was the puppet who put the bodies in the suits, why would they do that? Like, why would they hide the bodies? And finally, in at number one, the platinum rule. The biggest mistake that William has ever made, and I will stand by this until the day I die, was the fact that he killed people in his own establishment, okay? If it's unknown if this was always his intention, or maybe if he planned to kill somewhere else and then just was like, ah, eh, no, I'll do it here. But, like, come on. Who the absolute hell thinks that this is a good idea? Who in the comments wants to justify killing your prime demographic for your business? Okay, dealers don't kill their best customers. It's bad for business. So why would William think that this is a good idea? Literally go anywhere else. This is basically just killing someone in your house. Okay, it's putting unwanted and unneeded scrutiny on everything you do. You even end up getting banned from going back while the investigation is underway. It didn't help your business either, okay? You had to close the first location resulting in you opening another one that killed your daughter and then you had to close that one and open up a new one which ends up getting closed and then you get locked in a room for 30 goddamn years okay this is this, this one mistake leads to literally everything else in the series you don't do that the platinum rule we learned this from Barney Stinson don't crap where you eat okay if you just don't don't do it. Location. The location of the various crimes does actually factor into its effectiveness, believe it or not. The idea that William was killing in his own Fazbear restaurants is a ridiculous concept that in reality should have gotten him sent to prison. The saying is something along the lines of like, don't crap where you eat, which some take 
literally. Others take as don't date people you see on a regular basis. And in this scenario, I suggest that it should mean don't kill people where you're seen on a regular basis or, you know, constantly because it's your own business. Especially if it's the business that, like, targets kids. And while yes, this this doesn't instantly make you guilty, but um, come on, the first thing that anyone would do in this situation, not even a cop, would be question everyone who was working when whatever had happened, happened, or whoever it was disappeared. And let's be realistic, an incident the likes of the missing children's incident from 1985 would ruin a business permanently. None of this somehow they stay open bullshit because in the real world they would end up closing permanently because no parent would want to go to a place where five kids went missing, especially when no bodies were found, which could maybe help them, but it certainly wouldn't help much. If Afton had any competitors, any at all, right? Even this world's version of Chuck E. Cheese, Afton should have gone there if he had any competitors, or literally anywhere else would have made more sense. However, he chose to kill where he eats, and that's probably one of the worst decisions that he could have made. Well, the, aside from, you know, the killing in the first place. Animatronics. While the animatronics are an entirely other mistake, this time around I want to talk about how stupid it was to hide the bodies in the animatronics. Like, how the f***? Did he end up getting away with this? The smell of rotting bodies would already ruin the place, especially when its focus is eating pizza. The heat from the animatronics animatronic insides would speed up decomposition, and the animatronics are in front of people every single day. They even started complaining that they were leaking blood and mucus, as well as smelling like death. If this was real, and William getting away with it wasn't important for the plot, he would have been caught instantly. Oh, we never found the bodies of these kids, but now these animatronics are leaking blood and smell like death. Hell, they even make bone crushing sounds when they move. We should probably check this out. Oh look, turns out we found those missing kids. William Afton, you're under arrest for the murder of Cassidy, Fritz, Jeremy, Gabriel, Susie. Boom! Instantly! I don't know how this wasn't an open and shut case. Straight up, William was so goddamn stupid that he shouldn't have made it to the first game. Not to mention how stupid he was by building the fun time animatronics with these item containment chambers as he was calling it. Since the cops ended up questioning him about why he made those design choices in the sister location opening scene. Plus, he super powered the jaw of Fredbear from Fredbear's family diner to end up giving it a jaw that accidentally killed his son absolute moron. William, not the son. It wasn't his fault that he got his head shoved in there. If he had put it in there himself, it would have been his fault, but he didn't. Enemies. Now, while William did choose a set of easy marks, since, you know, kids can't really defend themselves against a dude in a part animatronic furry suit, but he he's a moron for exclusively killing that demographic only. I don't know why he did that. Sure, it's easier on him, especially when he's fully combined with an animatronic, but Henry serves as the opposition to William, and the reason William ends up burning multiple times. It's not Henry's fault that he turned into Springtrap, but it's certainly his fault that he turned into scrap trap since this is most likely due to the FNAF 3 fire. 